Good morning, it's Lou Collins. Bit of a croaky show today. Um, I'm going to try and get through this next hour the best I can. Um, with the latest on what's happened with Roger, who is banged up in prison at the moment for three weeks. Uh, Danny Bamping, who's also been a guest of the show, um, represented him in court uh, on the day after, or two days after he was um, thrown into the back of a police car and tried in a secret court with no jury and no defence for himself. Um, so Danny was over, um, went up to Liverpool, Manchester, I think it ended up in, um, defending him unfortunately uh, they didn't really get anywhere so uh, we'll get the latest from brian on that and followed followed on from brian um i've got author william engdahl who wrote seeds of destruction and his new book the gods of money so he'll be dis he'll be on the show um just after quarter past 11 um just want a quick i picked up the papers on the way here and the daily mail has dedicated seven pages to wimbledon and the royal family sitting in the box with Clegg, uh, Cameron and the Beckhams. So we've got seven seven pages completely dedicated um, to Wimbledon and Andy Murray's loss and different people in different situations uh, crying. Um, the only bit of news I actually found today in the Daily Mail was on the City and Finance uh, page, on page 59, um, where Barclays' boss faces showdown with MPs. Um, so... The Daily Mail is, is right up there, um, reporting news and great factual stuff as usual. So thanks for the Daily Mail on different people weeping. That's uh, that's that's just super. Um, and the Independent hasn't really got too much going. It has got something on the more security and draconian policing, and that's in the eye, uh, the, the Independent's little... Um, sister paper, draconian police powers which will allow officers to move on groups <coughs> of two or more people near the site of the Olympic Games that come into force. Um, so, welcome to the police state, London. Um, as you know, we had uh, Ben on the on the phone last week, the Olympic whistleblower. Um, he's going to come on again next week with his, his sort of like latest update on what's going on there. Um, but again, yeah, absolutely no news to report of this morning in the mainstream media unless you want to see um, Kate Middleton, David Beckham, Victoria Beckham crying after Andy Murray's loss. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Brian in because I'm struggling here. So I'm going to let Brian take over and do a bit of talking on the latest uh, Roger update. So good morning, Brian. Good morning to you, Lou. OK, um, I can't do much talking this morning. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, really, if you can update people, you know, people around sort of Totnes and Devonway, as to the situation with Roger Hayes, on what happened last Monday, and right up to present day, please. Uh, okay, can can I just ask a question for, before I um, start speaking, and that is that I've I've also got um, Mr. Chris Jarvis available. Um, he sent a Skype. He's answered your Skype request, so right. you should have him on Skype. I will add him to the call right now while you're filling people in as to what's going on. OK, that's, that's excellent. OK. Uh, well, yes, good morning to listeners. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, Roger Hayes has not been refusing to pay his council tax. He's been withholding it. And this is um, an important factor because we all have a right to withhold um, our taxes, including council taxes, if that money is not being used properly. We have a right to withhold it and to start asking questions to find out why it's not being used properly. So the, the story about Roger Hayes is that Roger has been a campaigner for many years now, travelling the country, giving talks and trying to bring people to people to the fact that our liberty and freedom are being lost um, as our institution is being attacked. 
undermined. And as a result of the work that he's done there, um, he started to realise that our own taxes were being used against us, and that is why he's withheld. Now, what, what has happened in this case is that um, Roger has had a number of court um, appearings with Wirral Council, his local council up in, in the Merseyside area, and uh, each time he's gone into court, he's actually managed to hold his own, and the council have not been able to prove their case. On Monday last week, um, at about um, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, out of the blue, two police cars arrived at the home of Mr Roger Hayes. He was arrested, and then nothing more was heard of him until his family received a call nine hours later to say that he was in Liverpool prison. And what we reported um, the next day... And which I can um, and what I can now confirm for listeners is the fact that um, uh, at no stage in, in in the court case against Roger, which resulted in him being imprisoned, he didn't have legal representation with him. He wasn't allowed to conduct his own defence. There wasn't a jury present, and there were no press or reporters present. So the council put him through a court proceeding which was totally and utterly unlawful. It was a secret court. The correct title for this is a star chamber, a complete secret court. And the case shows, exactly as Mr Hayes has been warning, that Britain is now slipping into a dictatorship where people can simply be lifted off the streets by the police and put in prison. The case gets worse in that um, the, before last, there was another hearing against Mr Hayes, initiated by Wirral Council, and Mr Hayes did not even receive a summons to that hearing. A court hearing took place about him and about his case of which he was totally unaware, and because he was unaware, he didn't turn up. Because he didn't turn up, they simply issued a bench warrant for his arrest in his absence. Now, I can understand that some listeners may be thinking, this is impossible, but I am saying to you that what every word I am saying at the moment is factually correct, and even Roger's uh, local MP... Um, a uh, lady called Maria Eagle, uh, has been making inquiries, and we know that Wirral Council did not even use their um, own legal department to pursue this case against Mr Hayes. It was simply done by a few officers within their council tax department. Um, last week... An attempt was made to free Roger by using the process of habeas corpus. Um, but this week, there are further attempts going to be made to free him on the basis that uh, proper due process in the court has not taken place. And it's at this point that I wonder whether we could speak to Chris, Mr Chris Jarvis, uh, because Chris has got a lot more expertise and knowledge on, on the legal issues than I have. Do you, so Brian's just been um, updating the listeners um, as to what's happened sort of in the run-up to last week and um, uh, with Danny going into court. Do you want to do you want to pick up the story on, on, on where it is now and um, what's been happening? Because he was in court. Danny went and represented him last week. That's right. Yeah. Um, Danny went and represented. So you, if you can if you can update what happened in the court that day. Um, obviously, it was thrown out, and where we are now, please, Chris. Yeah, well, basically, obviously, um, the habeas corpus application was made, and it was made um, before the Queen's Bench Division um, of the High Court of Justice. Um, that was done in Manchester. Um, now, one thing that we had suspicions about that, that um, we pretty much confirmed solidly is that there is only one High Court, um, and that's in London. Um, and, and what do locally is try and sort of uh, fudge the way through and... Uh, and um, 
put, lead you up a cul-de-sac where there's nowhere to go, basically. Um, and that's what what happened with, with Danny, is the judge basically wouldn't listen to his um, argument and was just moving on to the next issue, next issue, and just trying to find a way out of it. Um, but basically, as, um, te- as the technicalities go, um, with the habeas corpus, the... Uh, prison governor has to give a lawful reason as to why they're holding the prisoner. If they cannot give a lawful reason, the prisoner should be set free, and that's mandatory. Um, now, uh, you, you know, just from that alone, you can you can see that um, something seriously went wrong um, from a judicial point of view um, when they were dealing with, with the application that Danny put before them. Um, so what we're actually doing from that is, is we have a number of options to go through. Um, one of them is a, a form of judicial review on the um, habeas corpus and also the whole uh, process that's um, gone on before of incarceration of uh, Roger and um, that's a old writ um, which which used to go by the title of writ of Satoria um, it's now known as a quashing order and that is still available that is a common law writ the same as the habeas corpus what the courts have tried to do in recent times is they've tried to um, put in place this thing called a judicial review now, what they've done with that is is basically create a process where you have to ask for permission. Now, in law, only children ask for permission to do things, and um, Roger's a man, so we are asking, we are demanding basically straight for the judicial review. So we've done the paperwork for that um, between myself and uh, John Hurst, and uh, there's also a lady called Yvonne Stewart Taylor that's been giving some assistance as well. There's a real team sort of at work here, which is brilliant. People are really coming together for Roger, um, and also then there's the um, option of avoiding the orders which um, John Hurst has, has specifically worked on that paperwork. That's a specific area that he's been looking at, which is fantastic research and work he's been doing. Um, and, and what that's basically doing is, is um, just nullifying everything um, because the process has not been done right. And then the th- there's a third option that we're also looking at, um, which um, many people may not be aware, um, that, but Roger is actually held as a civil prisoner. And this makes things um, quite messy in terms of, well, where do you appeal? Do you appeal to the civil division or do you appeal to the criminal division? Um, funnily enough, we actually had some experience of this last year um, with um, Malcolm Massey and um, uh, Norman Scarf uh, yeah. doing obvious corpuses on them. And um, both uh, um, of those two gentlemen were actually held as civil prisoners. And what we actually discovered is, um, and, and this is knowledge for the listeners, is that you can actually appeal to the criminal division, um, which is what we actually did in, in Norman's case, um, where he was subsequently uh, released. Um, so they're the three options on the table at the moment. And what uh, John Hurst is actually doing at the moment, he's, he's travelling across to Liverpool, or he'll probably be there now, um, and he's actually going to go into prison to see uh, Roger and get his um, wishes and feelings, um, you know, on, on, on the options that are there. Um, and then upon his instructions, um, we will then take things forward on either all three options or one of them or maybe something that, um, Roger's come up with himself but the key thing here is that we've done the preparation and it's it's there ready for um, a, a result and what we're actually looking at ultimately here is to make Roger's um, stay in prison a worthwhile stay um, it's absolutely horrendous what's happened to him um, but there is a bigger picture here and that is the enforcement of the council tax And what we're actually looking at in the uh, legal argument, you might say, or lawful argument, whichever way you want to look at it, um, is is to um, nullify the ability of the state to do this, um, Mm. to take action like this. um, Because ultimately, it could be any one of us that's um, sat there where Roger is. And Roger, um, to be honest with you, he's a very, very brave man uh, for taking that stance. And um, a lot of people... Um, will be saying, oh, you know, you should pay your council tax for this and that, but but he's highlighted some real issues here about where the money is actually going, and he's not against paying it. He's just he's just he, he's he's it's as um, Brian's reiterated a number of times, he is simply withholding payment until they provide him with a lawful bill, 
um, you, you know, and that's that's a fair point. So um, Roger's taken up this um, position of uh, civil disobedience, uh, technically as it's known, uh, under the uh, title of lawful rebellion, which comes under Article 61 of the Magna Carta, um, which the Magna Carta, uh, because it's a um, uh, not been made by Parliament, it cannot be repealed, although um, <coughs> Parliament has, has made a number of attempts um, and, and have actually done so of, of removing entries from it within their recorded legislation. Mm. And I say to the listeners, that doesn't mean to say it's not there, it's still there, they're just trying to hide it. Because the thing with law is that uh, when it comes to common law, common law cannot be repealed. And Magna Carta is part of the common law. Um, and and this, is, this is what the um, um, legislative process does, is they try and divert the attention away from, from the core remedies available um, and try and create these new processes where you have to ask for permission for this and that. Mm. And um, really what we're trying to do here ultimately is, is um, bring it back to common law and reassert the rights and, uh, you know, as I say, make, make it worthwhile for Roger. Brilliant. So what can, um, what can people who want to support Roger Hayes' campaign, what, what can people do, Chris? Um, well, first of all, there's a petition that's um, going around at the moment, and that is on goldpetition.com. Uh, yeah. And if people type into Google, free Roger Hayes, it's the petition that comes up on the first page. Okay. Um, people, um, you know, may think, oh, petitions don't do much good, but um, just to say to everybody, it's just like any other tool. And I have actually presented petitions in court before, um, because what, what we're actually looking at here is, is presenting... Uh, something to the judge that demonstrates a uh, wider public interest and that is key um, to justice being delivered because justice um, technically can only be done in the public interest yeah. um, so with such um, facilities like that the judge can't really ignore it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely okay and um, there's a um, Facebook couple of Facebook pages open though free Roger Hayes pay, Facebook pages so they can get behind that for updates and Maybe yep. people can, you know, if, when, if it does go up to the High Court and you get seen, there can be some support there for you guys. Yeah, yeah well, this is it. We're, we're actually looking at um, the possibility of um, using two courts here. Um, for the void order applications, we're looking at uh, Liverpool. And for the uh, Sartoria, we're looking at the High Court in London. Okay. Um, so, obviously, we, we'll only know which way we're going once um, John's been in to see uh, Roger. And I'm sure that John... Uh, I'll, I'll be on later on uh, to give you an update on that. Fantastic. Yeah. Lou, may I just add one point? Yeah. And that is for listeners, um, if, if you're interested in what we're talking about and a bit curious, you might not understand it all, but Roger's arrest and imprisonment without due process should also be viewed against the fact that at the moment we have Kenneth Clark MP who is calling for yet more courts um, to be allowed to convene with no jury present, where there will simply be a judge. And what Roger Hayes and Chris and myself and many other people are warning about is that the moment you've excluded a jury from a court, the judges can do as they please. And we are seeing judges now literally making up the law as they go along. This is a very dangerous precedent, and Roger Hayes' case is so much greater than a man who's withheld his council tax. It's highlighting the fact that Labour, the Liberal Democrats, and the Conservatives at the moment are working together to destroy our con Constitution, to undermine the House of Lords, which has given us protection, and to destroy common law. And they want to do this because they are trying to lock us fully into the European superstate. Yeah. It's a very dangerous situation emerging at the moment. It is, it is. May, may, may I just um, j jump in there a second? One, one of the um, things that we're doing is, um, just to let everybody know, uh, with the legal argument, is we're actually using a hybrid of uh, common law, uh, UK legislation, and also European legislation. And the reason we're doing that is, is because, obviously, as you've just said, they're trying to bring in this uh, European legislation, and we've got a particular um, entry uh, within European legislation um, that, that we're going for, and that's Protocol uh, 4, 
Article 1 of the uh, European Convention of Human Rights. And I'm mentioning this because it's not actually listed within um, the UK legislation, but the uh, UK government and UK laws are all tied to it. Mm. And that particular law <coughs> is the prohibition of imprisonment for debt. Right. Now, they, they can't really hide now, you see, because, uh, you know, the, if they're pushing for the European legislation, then, you know, we, we, we're we going to reach a stalemate here where, where they have to acknowledge this. And uh, effectively, what we're going to do is, is, as I say, we, we're going to aim for preventing the enforcement of, of these um, of this unlawful behaviour, really, on, on behalf of the state. Mm. Right, guys, thank you so much for... Um Spending spending a morning or spending your time with me. Um, I've I've got to kind of move on because I've got William Engdahl lined up to to speak. Brian, there'll be some more updates going on this week down at the column, won't there? Yes. Look at www.ukcolumn.org, and we'll update the moment we've got more news on on Roger and the, and the true significance yeah. of the case. There's nothing again in mainstream media anywhere on it. Absolutely nowhere. So says it all, really, doesn't it? Well, it's worse than that because the Liverpool Echo, which did report that he'd been uh, imprisoned, has refused to investigate what actually took, in the, took place in the court. And one of their senior um, people, um, the content manager, the lady who's a content manager, said to me on the phone that people in Liverpool were more interested in their dustbins. <laughs> What a shocking thing to say. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I've just gone through the mail, and you know what? They've got seven pages dedicated to different people crying at Andy Murray's uh, loss. And the only bit of news I found was on page 59 of the mail. So um, media's, media's up there, as always, reporting interesting stuff. OK. So, thank OK, you. thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Brian. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. So fight for your rights. Join the revolution, take back our power, join the British Constitution, the British Constitution, join the revolution, lawful rebellion, our right, the British Constitution, we stand for a future we control, our heritage lies in free men's souls, we fight to conquer Britain's foes, the British Constitution, we fight to conquer Britain's foes. The British Constitution, we fight to conquer Britain's foes. The British Constitution, the British Constitution, the British Constitution.